I call bringing unknown works of art to life the great game. There are few things that can be more interesting and at times more frustrating. So let's follow the journey of this painting from rummage sale to full documentation. It should be fun. In our last video, we really made some progress with our mystery painting. We now know the artist and a great deal about the subject matter of this work of art. In this video, we will attempt to answer the question, was our painting, which was found in a rummage sale, once owned by a queen? If you remember from our last video, Frederick Goodall, the British Orientalist painter and member of the Royal Academy, wrote an autobiography of personal experiences. In this book, he said that there were two original pictures he painted at Windsor Castle which were acquired by the Queen. We know one of those paintings because it remains in the Royal Collection Trust to this day. Here it is. You will notice that the black and white image of this picture bears a great deal of similarity to our mystery painting. There is a wall, birds, the River Thames, the town of Eton, and Eton College. It is almost as if the two paintings are intended to be a pair or a match set. In fact, in art historical terms, a painting which is intended to be one of a pair of a match set is called a pendant. Pendants are quite common. They are similar in size, share a common theme, and are often displayed in close proximity to each other. Is our painting a pendant to the one in the Royal Collection Trust? Let's check the size of our mystery painting and compare it to this painting in the Royal Collection Trust. The sizes of the two paintings are important for two reasons. First, if our mystery painting is a pendant, then it should be very similar in size to the painting in the Royal Collection. Secondly, the two original paintings spoken of in Goodall's book were not created in the studio. They were painted on site on the terrace at Windsor Castle. To paint on site, Goodall has to carry all of his painting equipment, panels, brushes, tools, gear, and kit to the location. The general process for setting up for an on-site painting can be somewhat cumbersome. There were probably certain sizes of picture that Goodall preferred when he worked outdoors or out of the studio. The size of our mystery painting might give us some insight whether it was painted on-site or in the studio. So let's check the sizes. This painting, in the Royal Collection Trust, is listed as 70.2 by 90.5 centimeters. Our painting is listed in inches at 27.5 by 35.5 inches. Converting inches to centimeters, we get 69.9 by 90.2. Therefore, we can round off the measurements of both paintings to 70 by 90 centimeters. In other words, they are the same size. This is a strong indicator that our painting is in fact a pendant to the painting in the Royal Collection Trust. It is also a significant point in favor of it being one of the two original paintings painted from the terrace of Windsor Castle. Now let's analyze the exact phrase from Goodall's book. Quote, The Queen acquired the two original pictures painted from the North Terrace one looking up the Thames and the other looking toward Eton College. The painting now in the Royal Collection Trust, which appears to be a pendant to our painting, looks toward Eton College and shows part of the north terrace of the castle. Here we see the college, and of course here's the terrace. Let's look at our painting. Here we see the terrace, and our view is looking up the Thames. Our painting fits the exact description of the other painting that Goodall described as being acquired by the Queen. Now we know that when Goodall refers to the two original pictures painted from the terrace, he must have made other pictures back in the studio. In fact, we do know that such paintings exist. Here's a picture from a Christie's auction catalog of a painting which is very similar to the painting of the Royal Collection Trust. We notice that Goodall has added cricket players to the scene. Probably a nice marketing touch for a painting dealing with the college town of Eton. Here we see that in his studio process, he adds a feature to the original picture. We could call his creation of a studio version of this picture an additive process. He starts with the version now in the Royal Collection and adds something to it. 
We also know that two versions of our mystery painting exist, the other being a larger version in the Salford Museum and Art Gallery. In these videos, we've used images of our painting and the version of our painting that is found in the Salford Museum interchangeably. The pictures are very, very similar, and there are more images available from the painting that is in the Salford Museum. Yet, while our painting is very similar to the painting at the Salford Museum, there are two significant differences. The version in the Salford Museum is much larger. That size painting would be quite a bit more challenging to transport and paint on site, which indicates that it is a studio version. And secondly, in the painting at the Salford Museum, Goodall has added collegiate rowers rowing on the Thames. We can see them here. Once again, this is a nice marketing device for a painting of the college town of Eton. So the painting at the Salford Museum is a studio version of our painting with an added feature. Both our painting and the painting in the Royal Collection Trust appeared in studio versions with additions. In other words, Goodall used an additive process to transform on-site versions into studio versions in both cases. To sum up, our painting is a pendant to the one in the Royal Collection Trust. We know that the Queen acquired the two paintings. Does it make sense for the Queen to have acquired only one of the two pendants? Secondly, our painting fits the exact description of the second painting which was acquired by the Queen, as it is described in Goodall's book. And thirdly, both our painting and the painting which remains in the Royal Collection served as the basis for studio versions with subject additions to the original scene. We must say that in total, the preponderance of the evidence does suggest that our painting, which was found at a rummage sale in Kansas City, was at one time owned by Queen Victoria. It looks like our mystery is solved. Our painting from the rummage sale was once owned by a queen. In our next video, we will speculate on how our painting got from the Queen's collection to that rummage sale. I hope you'll join us then.